Well, you know, having coached in the D League last year, I mean, I really enjoyed the, uh, you know, working with younger guys and trying to help develop guys. And it's a competitive league. It's the second best league in the world outside of the NBA. So, uh, great talent. Uh, you know, good officiating, and then, uh, you know, I mean, the, the best place to be in the D League is is uh, is with an NBA. Uh, owned or NBA affiliated team and, and it's, you know to, to be able to be part of the uh, Defenders Lakers family is is uh, you know in my mind this is the best job outside of the 30 NBA head coaching jobs I think that you know for me at the stage where I am I would rather be the Defenders coach than an NBA assistant so I couldn't be luckier. Why is that? You know I mean I think that as a coach you continue to get better and better uh, when you're the head guy and you're calling your own timeouts and the decisions are on your own shoulders and uh, as, a, as an assistant coach you know you can suggest but uh, there is a huge difference between diagram and last second plays and making adjustments on pick and roll coverages right. and uh, it's easy to suggest it's it's a lot more difficult when all those decisions land on on your shoulders. Now from what I understand at least from what I read when this position was open you reached out to Joey and, and Mike what did you emphasize to them as far as just your interest in the position? Yeah, I mean, I just reached out, you know, with an email to, to, to basically Mitch and, and Mike and, and Glenn and, and Joey and, and just, you know, said, hey, I know you have an opening. Would love to talk if you guys, you know, would, would like to meet and get together. And, and then Joey called and we started having more and more conversations. And, you know, with each conversation, I think we became, uh, you know, more comfortable with each other. And, and uh, actually, I was in uh, Venezuela when I got the call that, uh, you know that the job was was mine, and I, you know, I was really happy. I mean, I, it it is a great situation for us. Right. In terms of those, I mean, obviously you got the job, but amidst those conversations, what came out of that in terms of just the discussions you had? With them? Well, Joey was really thorough. I mean, he asked a ton of questions. You know, I think the first interview we had on the phone was was was, you know, close to two and a half hours or two hours, and then. Uh, it just kept evolving, you know, he wanted to know everything, offensive philosophy, defensive philosophy, uh, things I liked about the D-League, things that I thought, you know, could change, the, uh, what was our relationship last year with like Golden State, who was one of our affiliates in Reno, so all those type of conversations he hit upon and, uh, until he finally felt comfortable. How would he characterize what your offensive and defensive philosophy is? Yeah, you know, I think the big thing for us is going to be especially at the minor league level is you got to kind of see who your players are and you have to adjust you know uh, we you could start off being a fast break team uh, but then if you lose your point guard at the NBA you might become a little bit slower paced team so I think the one thing in, in coaching in the NBA development league is you've got to be able to be flexible with who you have on your roster uh, having said that we'd like to be a team that that, that that pushes the ball and scores at a fast pace and and uh, try not to walk the ball up the floor and, and, uh, and put our scores in a position where they're comfortable with the basketball. And on that same note, I think you mentioned earlier that um, whatever vision Mike Brown has in terms of the philosophy and how he wants you to run that, you do that. What kind of discussions have you had with that? With yeah, I mean, you know, I think that Mike's so concerned right now with, with what they're doing and, and, and new staff in place. Uh, you know, really for us it's going to be uh, you know, once an assignment player would happen and, and, and what they would want, uh, meaning, you know, Mitch and Mike, on, on how they would want a guy that maybe possibly could be sent down on minutes and roles and, and, uh, and how we're supposed to develop a guy. I think that's going to be uh, the biggest conduit between going back and forth with each other on, on uh, you know, an assignment type player. I think you've said uh, the number one goal when you're in this position is to try to get players ready to make it to that NBA level. What's the process for that entail in terms of developing them to that position? Yeah, I mean, really, Mark, it depends on the on the player. You know, some guys might have a deficiency shooting the ball, so you're going to have to work pre-practice, post-practice on the guy shooting for him. Other guys, uh, it might be attitude, or, or with another guy, it might just be a maturity issue, or... Uh, some guys need strength in the weight room. So uh, if a guy's in the NBA Development League, there's probably a deficiency in that player's game or a hole in that player's game. And so it's our job to try to get with that player individually and try to say, hey, you're here. Now, how can we get you to where you really want to be? 
Uh, and then the players got to work. You know, we can suggest, we can do individual stuff, we can do group things that can help a guy, but uh, really player development is, is, is on the player's shoulder as much as it is on the coach's shoulders.